One of the most frustrating results of cutting boards on a table saw is getting burn or scorch marks. But only sometimes. So why does this happen and what can we do about it? By the way, if you are new to this hobby, you've probably been watching a bunch of woodworking videos and you may be feeling a little bit overwhelmed. It's hard to know where to even begin, let, let alone know what tools you're gonna need to get started. Well, I've created a method to get you started by actually building your first project this weekend. It's called The Weekend Woodworker, and I'll show you all the basics to woodworking in a step-by-step -step approach. And to answer your first big question, what tools do I need and do I have to spend a fortune? I've got a free guide I want you to have showing you how you can get all the tools you need for less than $1,000. Just head over to mytoollist.com and download it today. When it comes down to it, there's really only one cause of wood scorching with a table saw, excessive friction. A lot of times you just need to do a little detective work to figure it out. First of all, it's important to note that certain species of wood are more prone to scorching than others. The most notoriously finicky woods are cherry, maple, and purple heart. I don't think I've ever made projects out of those and not experienced at least some degree of burning. The main source of friction will be from the saw blade spending too much time spinning against the wood. In other words, feeding the wood through the blade too slowly. Knowing what the correct feed rate should be can be kind of tricky to gauge, especially if you're brand new to your saw. Most woodworkers will agree that it kind of has more to do with intuition, experience, and understanding the capabilities and limitations of your particular saw. I tend to feed wood through my saw more or less by feel. And this doesn't mean that you should try to force lumber through your saw as fast as you can. This could bog down your saw, leading to ragged cuts or even more scorching. Trying to speed through any power tool procedure can also lead to injuries. Think more about maintaining a steady feed rate. If you notice some scorching, try increasing the feed rate on your next cut and see what happens. But keep it steady. And this can be difficult when ripping long boards because you sometimes need to stop feeding the board in order to reposition your hands for the rest of the cut. I like to use two push blocks and leapfrog them to maintain that steady feed rate. But again, figure out a system that's not awkward or uncomfortable. If you have to stop and reposition your hands, do it. It's better to deal with a few burn marks than to take a trip to the hospital. The second reason you may be getting scorched wood is having a dull saw blade. Again, this comes down to friction. A dull blade simply can't cut through lumber as quickly as a sharp blade, so it slows down your feed rate. Whenever I put a new blade on my saw, I always wished I hadn't waited so long. As the blade slowly dulls, we sort of adapt to getting used to it cutting worse and worse, almost forgetting what cutting a board with a sharp blade feels like. Similar to a dull blade, using a dirty blade can also slow your cuts. Blades can collect tree resin deposits and other gunk that just needs to be removed. If you cut a lot of pine, this stuff could really build up. There's a lot of methods you can try to remove it, including laundry detergent, dish detergent, vinegar, oven cleaner. There's commercial products specifically made for cleaning blades. Another burn culprit could be a blade with too many teeth. A fine toothed blade doesn't have wide enough gullets between the blades to let the sawdust fly free, causing it to cut slower and cause more friction. If none of these fixes seems to help, check to make sure that your rip fins is perfectly parallel with your blade. Likewise, your blade needs to be parallel with your miter slots. If either of these are out of whack, the wood can pull or push away from your blade as you feed it through. Not only does this cause friction, it can lead to kickback. Check your table saw manual if you're not sure how to adjust your blade and your rip fits. Ultimately, burn marks can be annoying, but it doesn't mean you have to scrap those cuts. You can just sand them off or use a card scraper or plane to remove them. Or if the cuts are on pieces that are gonna be glued together or otherwise hidden, don't bother removing the burn marks at all. But it's definitely a lot easier to try to reduce the scorching in the first place.